Good morning everyone and welcome to our service live here on Facebook for Strain Presbyterian Church on Sunday the 10th of January. Hard to believe we're at that stage already um, but it's great that we can actually meet together in this way and to worship together. Uh, if you join us later on today that's fine that's okay um, or if you're watching it on YouTube or indeed if you're listening on CD then you are very welcome. Just to remind you as well that uh, during this service we will actually celebrate communion together. So if you don't already have some bread and wine, uh, juice sitting ready waiting, don't worry, it is a live feed, you can pause me. Scary thought, I know. Um, go and grab what you need and then come back again, just so that we can enjoy communion together. So welcome everyone as we gather. Uh, and it's great just to see the different names bouncing up on the bottom. Um, and I'll try and keep a wee eye on it in case there's any messages that come through, but forgive me if I miss them from this distance. Just a couple of announcements um, to make this morning. The first one is just to remind our elders that tomorrow night we have a session meeting by Zoom at half seven. So please remember that and to join, all, join us and log in for that uh, at half seven. The second is a sad announcement in one way. Um, it's happy in another way, something which we'll come to later on in this service as well, in that we regret to announce the passing of Peggy Moore. Peggy passed away last Sunday morning at the age of 99. Um, this, a service of thanksgiving for Peggy's life will take place this week and her daughter-in-law Joan and the family uh, continue to be in our prayers at this time. Let's just pause and let's just pray about that. Father, we are again reminded this morning of the cycle and the pattern of life. And um, we do thank you for Peggy's long life, how you have blessed her. Uh, Lord, for this incoming week for service, we just ask that you'd be with Joan and the rest of the family at this time. That you'd be close to them, um, all of Peggy's um, grandchildren and great-grandchildren, uh, and just the, the extended family circle. Just be near to them, be close to them, give them your peace and comfort, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. You know, we do all these different things as a, as a church family uh, and it's great to be able to mention birthdays. We've been doing that each week as we go along. And this week I have a list of some birthdays which are coming up. Uh, so I'm going to say these now. If I happen to miss your birthday or I've missed any of the other ones, then apologies. Uh, you can let me know about that later on. But I know from the list that I have that today is Heather Orr's birthday. So Heather, happy birthday for today. And then this incoming week, Alan Fraser, it's going to be your birthday. Paul Stewart, Ben Scandrit, and John Wolfe as well. So happy birthday to all those folks. Let's just give thanks at this time. Lord, thank you that we can celebrate things together. And even though we are separated and we are far apart, uh, we still unite through this way. And we can still thank you for birthdays and celebrations. So we do thank you for, for Heather, for Alan, for Paul, for Ben and John, and Lord, for anybody else who has a birthday coming up this week. We ask that you would continue to be with them, to be near to them, and just surround them again with your love and with your peace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Folks, as you know, um, if you've been following the news, we're going to be online like this for a wee while, just for the rest of this month. Um, there's a decision to be made again on the 6th of February as to what's happening with churches but PCI and a number of other churches within um, Northern Ireland did all agree voluntarily that the, the right thing to do to protect everyone was to suspend live worship um, at, or in-person services as we call and move solely to online. So we'll be doing that for the whole month of January up to the beginning like I said at this stage up until at least the 6th of February uh, and then as that's reviewed We'll keep you posted on any new developments that way, any new regulations uh, or, or what way it's happening. So please keep an ear out for any posts that go up onto Facebook or on the, the website as well. Um, and if you've got any queries at all, do give me a call. And do remember during this time that even though we can't meet in person, that as a church family we're still here for one another so please continue to reach out to each other we can use the telephone um, and, and we can phone and see how th people are if there's anybody who isn't well please let myself or the district elder know and then they can let me know 
and please be sure that we do continue to pray for you uh, and to look out for you. Uh, um, like I say, we may not be meeting personally, but we are still that church family. And it's also a church family we do things together. Um, Psalm 48 starts off this way. How great is the Lord, how deserving of praise in the city of our God, which sits on his holy mountain. You know, even in the midst of all that's going on, we do still praise God. We worship God. And that's what today's all about. Today's designs in God's creation to be slightly different. God knew that we would get tired as the day goes on, as the week goes on. So he designed a day that we could stop, that we could relax, set work to one side and unwind, and a day that we could focus upon him. Now for all of us that's different. For some people, um, they work on a Sunday. So they can't meet on the day that everybody else meets. But some day during the week they take time out. And that's what it's all about. And actually being able to do this and then being able to pick up this service at a later time during the week helps with that as well. Helps us to be able to focus upon God and upon who he is. So just as we meet together, let's pause. Let's pray. Let's just quieten and still our hearts. Come into God's presence and ask him to be near us and just to help us to hear him this morning. So let us all pray together. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for this opportunity just to pause from the busyness of working at home or still having to be an essential worker and go into work, and for our children having to do school at home or university. Lord, whatever the pressures are that we have faced this week, we thank you now for this opportunity just to step away from those pressures, to leave them to one side for this time whenever we can concentrate upon you, where we can think about you and about your word, and about what you say to us, that we can know your arms around us, that we can know ourselves refreshed by you. Lord, we pray truly this morning that we would know that refreshing and that as we do so, we would feel ourselves close to you and feel you close to us. Lord, thank you. And continue with us now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. At the end of um, this live stream today, I will post a couple of links up on our Facebook site. Links that will go through to some worship songs on YouTube just as we uh, do let us think about what Christ has done for us, seeing as we are celebrating in communion this morning. But right now, boys and girls, I want to talk to you. So how are you all getting on? I wonder, are you still going into school because of what mum and dad do, because they are working? Um, or are you getting homeschooled? Uh, I wonder how many times if you're getting homeschooled, you've fallen out with your teacher in the house? Um, I, I wonder if you've been sent to the step for a time out because you've argued about how to do the work. You know, it, it's, it's not easy whenever everyone's having to work from home, sure it's not, boys and girls. And especially just after Christmas. Now, I want to show you something that maybe you saw at Christmas time, or maybe as mum or dad um, got ready to work from home, or as they heard that you were having to work from home again, Maybe they were having to use one of these um, because you're, you're changing around maybe things in the house, maybe setting up a classroom in the house, somewhere where you can do the school work um, or somewhere where they can work and they maybe need an office. So I wonder um, during all of that and during Christmas, did you see one of these? Did you? Um, adults, I'm sure around the house you have these stashed behind sofas, behind tables just as you try to plug in more things. Boys and girls, these are really, really useful. Uh, it's an extension lead, and you can plug something into it. These, this one here has little switches you go on and off, and normally if it's plugged in, you would see a red light up here. Now, this one this morning is not plugged in, because this looks really good, doesn't it? Um, it looks like it'd be a really good extension lead, uh, and very, very useful. But if you look really closely at it, and I'll try and bring it closer to the camera so you can see this. If you were to look closely at the plug, the bit that you put into the wall, you might be shocked or you might be horrified or you might be really scared because actually some of the wires are hanging out. 
Now that means it's really dangerous, it doesn't it? And it's something that if you saw, you definitely wouldn't use it. In fact, you maybe would just take it and throw it in the bin and get rid of it because it's not safe. Um, you know, it's easy sometimes to spot those things which are dangerous to us. And sometimes it's harder to spot those things. One thing which is really dangerous to us, but is really hard for us to spot at times, is sin. Sometimes sin is really, really clever or subtle. And maybe something is wrong and we don't realise it's wrong. And it's, it, it's, it, you know, Satan, he uses that to, to, to make us feel bad. He makes that to, to be able to say, ah, look at you. You call yourself a Christian, but look what you've just done. You know, and... God wants us to run away from sin, but sometimes it's not so easy to spot. You know, there's a story in the Old Testament, and there's going to be a sheet going up later on about this. And there was a man called Abraham, and God told him that because of the sin of some cities, that he was going to destroy these cities. And these cities were called Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham said, oh, surely God, they can't be that bad. Surely those cities can't be as bad as what you say. You see, his nephew lived in one of those cities and he knew that his nephew was a good person. And he said, oh God, it's not as bad as what you say. Tell you what, God, if I find 50 good people in those cities, will you spare them? And God said, yes, I'll spare them. If you can find 50 good people, no problem. As Abraham was journeying towards these cities, because he wanted to go more and lot about what was going on, he said... Okay, God, um, maybe if I find 45 people, will it be okay? God said, yes, if you can find 45 people, then um, that's fine. As he thought about it, um, then God, he, Abraham said to God, well, what about if I find 30 people? God said, yes, if you can find 30 people. And then Abraham said, what about 20 people? And then he said, what about 10 people? Abraham started to realise that if God was saying that the places were sinful, that there was sin there. But he still knew that his nephew Lot was there and he wanted to rescue him. So Lot did get rescued. God told Lot to grab everything that he has and to run away from the city and not to look back. Because the cities were sinful, the cities were dangerous and that it wasn't good for them. You see boys and girls, God wants us to realise that Sometimes we do things and we, we maybe think they're not too bad. Maybe we think that it's okay. But if we do something which is wrong, which is sinful, it, it does damage us. It means then the next time, maybe we'll look at something which is even more bad. Something which a lot of people will say, well, that really is bad. And because we've already done something, it's, like, oh, it's not as bad. So we, maybe, you know, and maybe we'll do that thing. Whereas God wants us to know him, to follow his commandments, to, to look at how we should live our lives, to, to keep away from sin, to run away from sin and to keep far away from it. Now we will not always do that boys and girls, we will do things that are wrong and all the adults will tell you the same, we, we all do things every day which are wrong but it's about realising that they are wrong, about saying sorry and about being determined that we will not do them again because we will learn and then we will grow closer to God. It's a bit like that extension lead. If you were trying to plug it in, you would realise it wasn't working. And then you would throw it in the bin or you would get it fixed so that it could be used. You wouldn't try and use it again as it is. And it's the same with us and sin. God wants to realise that whenever we do things that are wrong, yes, we come and we say sorry, but then we change how we do things so that we don't do that same sin again, but rather we grow closer to God. Thank you, boys and girls, for listening. Let's pray together. Father, thank you um, for your word. Thank you for how it teaches us. Lord, we realise that sin comes as second nature to us, and we do it all the time. Father, help us not to, but help us rather to focus upon you, upon your word, upon what it means to us. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls, for listening. Um, I've just spotted on the screen that's been going up that I did miss one birthday, which was Olive Fitzsimmons. So, Olive, sorry I missed your birthday. Uh, I didn't have a note of that on the wee list. I can add that on. And happy birthday to you.
We started last week a new series um, in Matthew chapter 5, which will go on into chapter 6 as well, which is the Sermon in the Mount. Probably the bits, the bit which is known best from that is um, the Beatitudes. And we talked about the first of the Beatitudes last week. So let me just read to you at this stage one verse, and then I'm going to read some more verses later on um, from Genesis 49. So the one verse I want to read to you this morning at this stage is Matthew chapter 5, verse 4, one of the Beatitudes. And these are taken from the New Living Translation. It says there in Matthew 5, 4, God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Amen. Let's just pause and before we come to look at God's word and then go on into communion, let's just pray. Let's pray for our land at this time as the situation continues. Let's continue to pray for wisdom and continue to pray for our schools and our teachers and our, and our students, our universities, as everybody adapts to what's going on. Let's pray for those who are continuing to work for protection upon our key workers and their families. Uh, because we sometimes forget about the danger to them and the danger that they bring things home. So let's, at this time, focus on what is going on around us. And let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for everything that it shows us and that it teaches us. It shows us, Lord, that you are always with us and that you are ultimately in control. But Lord, your word also teaches us that, that this world is sinful and things happen that we don't like. And Lord, maybe we think that's what's going on at the minute. We, we just don't know what's going on with COVID. Lord, there's so many people saying different things um, about how it's judgment, how it's a, a reset, um, how it's the world gone mad. Lord, the only person who knows all of that is you. But Lord, what we can do is we can bring to you those things which concern us. We can bring to you our worries and we can leave them with you. So Lord, yes, we are worried about our children. Those who this week have had um, exams cancelled either at the level of transfer or GCSE or A-levels and we worry about their futures. But Lord, we know that you are holding them close and we ask just that you would give them that assurance that you are with them. And for teachers now, Lord, who have to sort this out and who have to work upon what grades or what assessments to give, give them wisdom. Give them the strength and the ability to do that. Lord, for those who continue to have to work in this environment, those who are going out day in and day out, whether it be um, in a hospital, whether it be in a shop keeping our, ourselves, keeping us fed, whether it be our utilities, keeping the bins collected, keeping electricity on, keeping the water running, Lord, there's so many essential services out there. Uh, and we think about all of those who work in something which is essential. But we know they are concerned about what is going on. They are concerned about bringing something home to their family. Because we have seen that happen. And we have seen how then people take ill. Lord, put your hand of protection upon our workers. Upon those who are keeping our country running. Lord, just be, be near to them. And as they come and go, help them to be safe. And Lord, the environments that they work in, may they be in safe environments. May people be considerate of one another. And Lord, for those who are ill, please be near them and help them, we pray. And if it be your will, Lord, that your, your healing hand would be upon them. And that you would restore them to health again. That for those who are in hospital, that they would get home. But Lord, we realise that that's not always the case. So no matter what the outcome is, Father... Help us to draw our strength from you. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. You know, it's appropriate this morning that we are looking at a Beatitude which says, God blesses those who mourn for they will be comforted. I wonder what it's like in your house at the minute. What's it like when it comes to um, news time? Most houses, I suspect, are in one of two camps. Either whenever the news comes on, you are glued to it to see what the latest is. Or maybe you've got so fed up with the news that you deliberately switch it off and put something else on. You find it so depressing, so um, infuriating, so sad maybe. Because each day we hear about more people who are taking ill. We hear about more people who have died as a result of COVID or COVID-related illnesses. 
or because they've taken COVID, something else happens in their body and they can't cope. And then we have that situation where families are mourning. Families are in loss. You know, we all mourn loss in different ways. Um, it's a very hard thing to do. And that hasn't changed over the years. I want to read you a passage taken from Genesis chapter 49 and on into chapter 50. So it's Genesis 49 verse 33 to chapter 50 verse 5. It's about Jacob and about how Joseph reacts whenever his father dies. So this is what it says in those verses. When Jacob had finished this charge to his sons, he drew his feet into the bed, breathed his last and joined his ancestors in death. Joseph threw himself on his father and wept over him and kissed him. Then Joseph told the physicians who served him to embalm his father's body. So Jacob was embalmed. The embalming process took the usual 40 days. And the Egyptians mourned his death for 70 days. When the period of mourning was over, Joseph approached Pharaoh's advisors and said, Please do me this favour and speak to Pharaoh on my behalf. Tell him that my father made me swear an oath. He said to me, listen, I am about to die. Take my body back to the land of Canaan and bury me in the tomb I prepared for myself. So please allow me to go and to bury my father. After his burial, I will return without delay. Amen. Joseph knew what it was to lose someone close to him. When his father passed away, he was sad and he mourned. The embalming process took 40 days and then they mourned for 70 days before they were going to go and bury him. You know, in Northern Ireland, we think it's long if you have to wait three or four days to have a, a service of thanksgiving to be able to bury somebody. But we all know that the grieving process for each of us is different and it takes a different amount of time. Some people seem to grieve easily, but really underneath they're hurting. Some people are very good at showing that grief and they can let it out and they can cry and they can mourn, as we say. Others hold it in. And at some stage, even behind closed door, they, they let it out where nobody sees them. And, and they cry and they lament. Maybe they shout and we're angry. We all go through that with grief. And then we get to that stage where we know that life has to go on and we have to get back to a routine again. Life is never normal. Life doesn't return to normal. It returns to what I call a changed reality. Where we learn how to live every day. And that's part of the cycle of life. And Joseph in that passage talked about that. That the very end of verse Genesis 50 verse 5, he says, After his burial, I will return without delay. That was Joseph's way of saying to tell Pharaoh that after all of this, after I have been able to bury my father, I will return. I'll get back to work again. I'll get back to my duties. And don't worry, I am here. It's not that I'm going to be forever mourning. You know, at different parts in the Bible, we hear about how people mourn. We hear about what's called sackcloth and ash. How people took off their fine clothes, how they put on clothes that were made of old material, they were itchy and scratchy, and they would be able to th throw in soot or dust over the top of themselves to, to visibly let people know that they were mourning, um, to let them know that they had a loss. Now, it seems strange then that in the passage that we read from Matthew 5, Matthew 5 verse 4, that Jesus would say, God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. You know, why would Jesus say, blessed are those who mourn? You know, it's a strange way of thinking about it. Think what comes before that. Think about the, the verse or the beatitude that we thought about last week. God blesses those who are poor in spirit and realise their need for him. That verse is all about how we know or how God wants us to know that we need him. And that we accept him as our Lord and Saviour. When we do that, that changes our relationship with God. It changes our outlook and things. And then we realise that 
life is not just about here on earth, but there is more to life, that this is only a small part of life. Perhaps that's why Jesus said, God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. You see, Paul writing later on in the New Testament, uh, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 and 14, he says this. And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know, know what will happen to the believers who have died, so that you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We firmly believe that whenever we have that relationship with God, whenever we are saved, whenever we are Christians, whenever we have personal faith, whatever phrase that you want to use, we firmly believe that whenever we have that, that whenever we die here on earth, that they, when we are present with God in heaven, that then we are fulfilled as such. God has prepared for us something far greater than this earth. In fact, our life here on earth is only a snapshot, a few seconds of what God wants us to experience and created us to experience. Because God created us to experience a relationship with him in heaven. You know, as you examine God creating the earth, and whatever way you think about that, and creating the Garden of Eden, and then once there's sin, God giving the, the Israelites the tabernacle and the temple, all of that, the Garden of Eden, the, the tabernacle, the temple, all point towards heaven. All point towards how life on earth is meant to be temporary, but life with God is meant to be eternal. And how if we have realised the first beatitude, if we have realised that God has done this for us and we have accepted him, then yes, we might mourn somebody from a human point of view. But we should realise that if that person has trusted the Lord, how now they are with God and how they are at peace. We often use at a service of thanksgiving, John 14. We often talk about how there is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And we, we talk about that place. But the verses that come later on, what Jesus says, I am leaving you a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift that the world cannot give. So do not be troubled or afraid. Remember what I, what I told you. I am going away, but I will come back to you again. We tend to forget about what Jesus did for us. And this morning's about remembering that. We tend to forget about the fact that we are only made to live in this earth for a short time, but ultimately to live with God eternally. And if we accept what Christ has done for us, then we know that we can do that. We know that if we accept him, then we are blessed when we mourn someone who leaves this earth. Because if that person has trusted, then they are with God. They are in glory, as we say, or they are in heaven. And they have perfect healing. No more tears, no more suffering, no more sorrow. But rather they are with their heavenly Father. That's why Jesus says, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Because Jesus himself puts his arms around us and says, don't worry, don't be afraid. Yes, I know you miss them. I know that your heart is breaking, but look, they trusted me. So one day we will be reunited. One day you will see each other again because of what Jesus has done for us. You see, it, 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 had to be that Jesus died for us so that we could have our sins forgiven. God had to have his heart broken by the loss of his son, by the crucifixion of his son, so that we could have our relationship fixed, restored, healed. So that Jesus could fulfil what he said 
Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. So as we think about that, and as we come to communion here this morning, let's pray and let's give thanks. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for what it teaches us and what it shows us. Lord, thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus. And as we come to celebrate that now and to remember that, thank you that through that, that sacrifice that he made for us, that our relationship with you can be restored so that even as we mourn someone who we lose, we can know peace and blessing, knowing that if that loved one trusted you, that now that they are with you. So Father, thank you that we are blessed by you because of what you have done for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you don't normally celebrate communion with us in stream, please don't rush away. Please stay on and, and watch and, and see what it's about. Because Jesus did say, and Paul actually said, that every time we celebrate communion, we declare the, the, the death of Christ. We declare what he has done for us. And what we are going to do now is remembering what Jesus has done, remembering how he sacrificed for us so that we could have our sins forgiven. We're going to use an ordinary piece of bread. We're going to use some juice, some wine, whatever you have at hand, doesn't matter. They are symbolic to remember what God has done for us. You know, in the Bible, um, the Last Supper, that that. Jesus shared with his disciples that is what communion is based upon and then as Paul wrote about that later on in 1 Corinthians that's what he points to and this is what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians the tradition which I handed on to you came to me from the Lord himself that on the night of his arrest the Lord Jesus took bread and after giving thanks to God he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in memory of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in memory of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. By celebrating communion together, we declare what Jesus has done for us. We declare that by Jesus dying on the cross, by his body being broken, by his blood being shed, that we have forgiveness of sins. And that's what restores our relationship with God. Now, it's not that every time we, we celebrate communion that we crucify Jesus again, because he only had to die once for our sins. And it's not that whenever we take the bread and the wine and it mysteriously turns into his body and blood. It's symbolic. It's just to represent but it's to remind us what Christ went through for us. Not that we would mourn. Um, not that we would be sad every time we have communion and think, oh, think of what Jesus did for us. But rather that we would rejoice. That we would say, look at the great love that Jesus has for us. That he allowed this to happen to himself. To forgive our sins. And by doing that, we're declaring to the world around us, look what Jesus has done for you. Look how much he loves you. Please trust him. Please just let him into your life. So that's what we're going to do this morning. But as we do that, let's pause right now. Let's give thanks for this bread and this wine uh, that we have here and that you have at home. Let's, and just as, as we think about that, think about what they represent and then we'll share communion together. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can celebrate communion this morning. We thank you again that even though we are separated by distance, uh, that we are united through your love for us. Lord, thank you for this bread, which reminds us of the body of your son, Jesus, which was broken for us at Calvary. Father, he suffered much. He was beaten. He was whipped. He was nailed to a cross. He had a sword to pierce his side so that we could have our sins forgiven. Lord, Jesus replaced the sacrifices on the altar with a perfect sacrifice once for all time. And just like the body of those animals were broken on the altar, 
So Christ's body was broken for us on the cross so that we could have our sins forgiven. And Lord, as, as Jesus was on that cross, as his side was pierced, his blood flowed down that hillside. Much like how the blood was poured down the sides of the altar. To remind us that it is the blood of Christ that covers and washes and cleanses us of our sins. It's that through the blood and the spilling of his blood that we have your grace. So this morning, Father, we thank you for this bread. We thank you for this wine, which reminds us of what Jesus has done for us. It reminds us of your great love for us. And Lord, for that, we are eternally grateful. Lord, as we come to celebrate now, we pause and we ask you to forgive us our sins. Forgive us of the things that we have done this last while. Wash our feet. Refresh us in you. Draw us close to you. So that as we celebrate communion now, we would truly know what it means to know fellowship, healing, forgiveness and restoration from you. Lord, thank you. Now and always. Amen. First Corinthians says that the Lord Jesus took bread and after he had broken it, he said, this is my body, which is for you. This do in memory of me. So I invite you to take a bit of bread and to remember and to share with me now in saying the body of Christ. In the same way he took the cup after supper and said this cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink this, do this in memory of me. Christ's blood spilt reminded us of the new promise that God made. That we have forgiveness of sins through what Jesus has done for us. So I invite you now to share the cup together. The blood of Christ. Let us pray. Father, thank you for how we remember what you have done for us. Thank you, Lord, that we have your grace, that all our sins, past, present and future, are forgiven through the sacrifice of your son, Jesus. Lord, your love for us is so great, yet we feel we don't deserve it, but again, we have it. Lord, thank you. And as we head off into this week, Lord, whatever we do, may we carry with us that thought, that reminder of all that you have done for us. That by celebrating communion, Lord, we declare your love for this world. And Lord, help us to show that love as we go out. Help us to be responsible this week. Help us to be considerate this week. Help us in everything that we do, that our actions would reflect your love. That people would know how much you care for them. So, Father, thank you. And go with us now, we pray. Lord, we say, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore, we pray. Amen. Thanks, folks, for joining with us this morning as we have sat around God's Word and as we have celebrated communion. It's been great to have you with us and remember this incoming week to take care um, look after yourselves and whatever you're doing and again if there's anything that comes up this week please don't be afraid to pick up the phone and phone myself or your elder let us know what is going on but in the meantime take care and god bless bye for now